welcome to part 8. In this video, we'll be starting up the freshly recommissioned Triumph T160 and taking her for a ride. When the bike came to us just under three months ago, it didn't start, let alone roll. The original brief here was to get the bike looking good and running well again for the owner to enjoy within budget. Many of the jobs that we've completed in this series are common tasks for classic bikes of this era. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Okay, since the last time you saw the bike, we had a, a bit of a situation with uh, one of the studs was pulling down with a torque wrench and it wasn't actually pulling up at all on the wrench and realised that it, the thread was stripped. So we had to take the rocker boxes off, take the head off and that's where we, we cut. And well, I'll show you in a moment how we got over that. Since I haven't seen you, we put it back together obviously um, the carbs are back on, the air box is back on, and the pea shooters. Now we're, we're going to a bit more detail a bit later on, but it's got nice brackets made up. We've got a little tank on here now, we're going to run the bike up in a little short while, so you can hear it, then we'll put the main fuel tank back on. The reason the tank is off at the moment is because, obviously we want to show you from where we were last time, but we sealed the tank inside. It, it got some rust inside, nothing bad, but the last thing I wanted was any, any contamination in these carburetors, any silt going through for those filters would have got into those carbs. And that's the last thing I wanted, have a, a carb problem on here, because you've got three carburetors and you know, you don't want that. Um, it runs really well. You'll hear it a little bit later on. Yeah, I'm pleased with it. And I think um, the owner will be happy too. We're gonna to talk about the stud, what we've done, and also an issue with the second carburetor and how we got over that. And uh, yeah, we'll take you to the bench and show you those bits. So this is a stud, this is the culprit. Nothing wrong with the stud here, but because the, the head is aluminium, it literally pulled the thread out. This is the remains of the thread inside the head itself. Literally, it pulled it out. Now to get over that, we've had to tap out the thread size in the barrel. But this isn't one, obviously. This is just showing you. We needed to go out to 10 mil. So before you start tapping, the best thing is to have something to guide you. When you're tapping, if I was just to tap this out, you can wander. If you get, like I've got here, this is not quite right size, obviously, but something that has been bored the same size you're gonna be doing this out to, we didn't need to drill this, we could just literally tap it straight out. So I drilled a hole in here, the same size as the, the tap that's going to go through. So when you put this down inside, it will keep this upright. It will stop you wandering. If that's tight fit in there, it would give you something to, to line up with. So it means once you start to go down into where you're tapping the new thread into the head itself, you'll be vertical. You won't be off centre. It's so important to get that right. So that's what we had to do. When I stripped that out, to do that, the friend made up, he's next door, an oversized stud. We'd just gone out 10 mil here, internal size is exactly the same. And when we fitted this in, we just a little bit of lock, used a little bit of lock tight to keep it in place. And it was fine. That's how we got over that. The other thing we had to sort out, because we've been, had to get on with the bike since the last saw you, was we built the carburetors up, and I'll explain in a moment about that. We had a problem with the centre carb dripping, and I thought, oh, don't, no. I'll put a new needle, a new needle in there. This is the old one. This has a neoprene tip. Now, these carburetors, this is the uh, uh, concentric carburetor. It has a seat, and the seat's in here, in this part of the body of the float bowl. That's recess right down the side so when the needle valve goes into the seat when the float drops down it's open when the float raises up it pushes that down and stops the flow of fuel well the bottom of the seat itself was barely corroded so obviously that neoprene tip would not seat in there but the only thing i could do was replace this now because i they're set into this aluminium of the body of the carburetor, the float bowl. The only way you're going to do it 
is to use a little bit of localised heat with a blow lamp, not too much, just to warm this area up. And once you're taking the banjo off, you can see there's a little hole down inside there. If I show you with a drill bit, you can see there's a hole down in there. That enables you to get a parallel punch, a small punch. And once this is warmed up, you can drift this out. You can push this out. So I managed to find another one of these, second hand obviously, but it wasn't worn at all because the seat in here is badly worn, very corroded. Bike's been standing, as we found out, probably the best part of 18 years, not eight or 10 years, but 18 years. And that's one thing I had to sort out. So a little bit of an issue with the center carb. Okay, so we've got three carburetors. What we've done, we've built them up on the bench. Now to, to get a, a starting point, get a 3.8 drill and make sure it's a, a light kiss fit underneath the slide. So we adjusted all three carbs. So that's a benchmark just to start so you know they all are synchronized. And that's it really. So then the course the adjustment is taken up on the cable and also the, there's a stop adjuster. We've only got a small tank on here at the moment and uh, we're just gonna kick it over. So we're just gonna move it away from the bike here. We'll put it back on the main stand. And what we need to do is just turn the fuel on. Quite a lot of weight in this one. We need to flood the carbs. We don't need to give it any choke. So we just turn this fuel on. It's most important to make sure that we get fuel coming out of each float bowl. So we depress the tickler. Okay, they're all flooded. And now, it shouldn't need any choke, so it chokes off. We turn the ignition on, and it should, should burst into life. We need to warm it up. It won't kick over very well when it's cold, so we need to warm up a little bit. We're just going to use some rubber and nylon lubricant. It just helps on these rubbers because they're quite tight when you're pushing this on. The only fixing with this tank is on those rubbers in the rear mount. One and a half on that one. Okay, that's a typical thing to happen. Uh, had it run up the little tiny tank on and it's been fine. Put the tank back on, put it with fuel, carburetion's changed a little bit. So I've had to adjust the pilot air screw running. It was running a bit lean and it's, it's just cutting out. But now I've got it back. I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of settling down, you know, but it's, it's fine now. It's your start now and she'll tick over. This is a, an A10 engine, people know that, but it's a 650 Scrambler. It's what was round back in 1961, American export only. States saw these bikes, we didn't see them. It's almost like forerunner to an RGS really. Um, it's, it's quite blingy, it's quite uh, 
tuned up, say Spitfire cam in it. It's on a single carb, but I'll fire it up for you, straight through pipes. So she's quite noisy. Okay, just um, taking the bike up the road, was going really well, just turned into the entrance and found that uh, a plug started to break down. Left hand cylinder, taking the plug out and it was just a little bit, bit oily. Um, this thing hadn't been run for a long time, I just cleaned the plug and it's fine now. But it, yeah, it's just popping and banging because we've got unburnt fuel in the exhaust pipe. Runs really well, the only thing I found wrong with it, we put a new speedo cable on and the clock's not working for some reason, whether the drive's not turning in the clock. But other than that, it's very, very smooth. Um, but that five-speed gearbox, it's a big bike, very comfortable. Brakes are starting to bed in now, but it's very, very torquey. Gives a nice ride. Um, the electric start works. In a moment, I'll flick it over for you in a moment, and you can see on the electric start, and it's now running properly again. So we're just, literally what I'm gonna do now is we're look at this um, speedo cable and see what's wrong with that it might well be the clock's got to be sent away and be um, just sorted out and the bike just needs to clean up what we had to do with the tank we had to put a tank sealer in the tank because it'd been standing a long time there was a certain amount of rust in there got most of it out but as i said i think earlier if that breaks down that tank and that rust starts to get into the fuel lines it will block those pilot jets or main jets you know you're going to get in those carbs and that's the last thing I wanted so I spoke to the owner and he said quite happy to have it sealed with a with a product it takes a week to go off so a little bit of a delay but no it's good it's very comfortable but it's quite heavy um, a few things we had to do was the side stand round here we had to extend it because at some stage in its life it's been welded back in place but in the wrong position so the bike was leaning over far too far and to 
do anything with that, you'd have to take the engine out and, and grind all that weld off that frame where it's been welded on and reposition it. So I put an extension on there for him, which he's okay about. This is not, like I say, it's not a full restoration, it's recommission. And as we found out, the bike has been off the road a lot longer than we originally were told it had been. Challenges with the build. Okay, stripping this down. The first thing that we really found very difficult was the brakes. The calipers were a job to get apart. We had to pump those with grease to get the pistons out. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was the, the rear master cylinder and the front master cylinder. You remember we had to heat it all up with a blow lamp and when we got it apart it had all this crystallised um, brake, fluid, uh, brake fluid and we managed to salvage both those units and seal kits have sorted it all out. Got a good brake now on the front, good brake on the back. But the other thing, because it's a triple, there's a lot more work and we, with the engine, we, what did we do? We had to start a motor off. We had the cylinder head off, we'd done the valves. Didn't realise that stub was an issue until we put the head back on and we started to torque it down with a torque wrench. And then we found it wouldn't pull up and I explained earlier, we found that it was just pulling the thread out. So we had to redo that. The carbs, because you've got three carburetors, quite a bit of work. Through the Sonic Cleaner, sill kits. Um, yeah, setting one of these up is a lot more work. Um, we put pea shooters on here. Uh, which are off a Norton Commando. They're not standard issue for this, but they sound nice. It gives a lovely tone and made up brackets. So it looks sympathetic to the whole bike. It doesn't look like it's an add-on. But it's been a long journey. It's been a long one, this one. And um, yeah, it's, I know you've been waiting for this last video for quite some time. So I'm pleased like you are to actually have this thing going now and finished. Oh, cost. Um, I suppose we've done this a little bit on a budget. On parts, it works out to be just over £1,100 on parts, but we're not including maybe a possible speedo clock replacement. Um, that's something you've got to check out today, but just over £1,100, which is not bad considering what we've done to it, really. Yeah, thanks for watching these uh, episodes, and sorry this one's been a long time coming, um, but it's done. It's done bar just the cable to sort out or the speedo itself. But yeah, it's been good to do. But I'm glad I've finished this one. And I'm glad actually I've got it so you can actually hear it running and see the bike going up the road. So thanks for all your comments and thanks for watching the channel. See you soon.